Well, hello everyone, uh, Angela Najjar here, and today we are gonna talk about something that I can't remember the last time that I really heard anybody spend time talking about. Of course, now that I've said it, my mailbox will be, my inbox will be full of replacement videos. So that's what, let the cat out of the bag, that's what we're gonna talk about today, is replacing uh, other policies that your clients might have. So, replacing can be, uh, there are some very, very, very important things that you have to remember in terms of replacing an existing policy. And there are some things that kind of pull the legality into it. And then there are some things that kind of um, are just a good business practice. Let's put it that way. So a couple things in terms of uh, when you get into a home and someone already has a policy and they've decided that they want what you have, okay? So first off, um, replacements um, are the kind of thing that are not only regulated from state, individual state insurance uh, commissions, but also by the carriers um, pretty strictly for a lot of reasons. One, and the most obvious primary reason of all is this. They want to make sure that you as an agent are not running around town um, replacing products that where there is no best interest of the client involved. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you go out and you um, have an appointment with somebody and you didn't know that they had an existing policy and then that comes up and they pull out that policy or they tell you what they have and you are you have suggested or shown them apples to apples, okay? So let's say that you've shown them something that was um, $100 and they're already paying $100 and you've shown them $100,000 in coverage and they have $100,000 in coverage and they have living benefits with their existing policy and you've shown them living benefits and they really, but they really, really like you. Not a reason to replace that existing policy. Uh, if you are comparing apples to apples, you have to be very careful about replacing somebody else's policy because the theory is, uh, whether it's from state insurance and, uh, uh, commissions or from the carriers themselves, the thought is that you're just out there trying to pick up commission dollars. You're replacing what they have, which was perfectly fine for them, um, just so you could write a new policy, get paid a commission. So that's the first thing you got to be careful of. One is replacing something where there is no better interest of the client involved. Now, if you go into a home and you have somebody who, um, it, where you are comparing apples to oranges, right? And let's just say that they're in a term policy and because of age or finances or uh, any myriad of reasons, uh, they really would like, you've shown them a whole life policy and they really would like to go into whole life because it would be much more advantageous for them to have something that would last the rest of their lives instead of only a few years longer on a term, then you are legitimately replacing a process, a policy because we've shown a benefit to the client. Um, if you are um, showing the client something where they can, they are saved a substantial amount of money, that is in the client's best interest. Um, but if you are simply in there and, and you're going to save the client, you know, 50 cents, you know, between their monthly premium, you're going to have a difficult time justifying how that was substantially in the client's better interest in order to replace a good policy that they already have. So you have to be very careful with that. Number two, and that is whether or not it's with, um, you know, if you're showing them something from company A and they already have a policy with company B. Now, the second scenario you have to be very careful of is internal replacement. So internal replacement is a pl replacement where you, whereby you are showing the client a policy or product uh, from the same carrier that they already have. Most insurance companies frown on that because now they've paid a commission to an agent over here, they've put the policy in force, they're, they are, they have insured the client, and now you go in and now you're gonna sell them on this other product over here or the same product, and all they're gonna do is cancel this policy to pay you a whole brand new commission and execute a whole brand new policy. And most insurance companies have pretty strict rules regarding internal replacement, and it's really frowned upon. 
So my best advice in that scenario is call the carrier. Find out what their policy is in terms of internal replacements because some of them have very strict policies. And the last thing we want to have you do is go out there, spend a lot of time uh, with a client writing a policy and then be told that they're not going to give you any commission or any credit or put the policy in force. Now it was just a big, great big waste of time. Um, in terms of, so my point in all of these scenarios that I told you so far is this. Replacements are fine. They are a natural part of this business. Steve and I have had many um, policies that we have had in force replaced by other policies because of age, because of uh, our desire to build things into our retirement, like cash value, um, uh, increasing costs. Uh, there's all kinds of, maybe it's just a bad product, right? There are all kinds of insurance products out there that are not great you know, that you wouldn't want. Find something better for your client and, and you have a legitimate reason for replacing what they have. Um, my, my one point that I will make on replacing is this. You've gotta be very careful that you tell your client that they are gonna need to cancel their existing policy once the new policy is put into force. Don't ever advise your client to cancel existing coverage until their new, better coverage is put into force and they have the policy in their hands. And here's why. If they cancel an existing policy, um, some, depending on the carrier, depending on the kind of type of product, the, the coverage will end immediately. And now if they are declined for their new coverage or if it comes back and they're table rated, now you could put your client in a position of having gotten rid of their existing policy. They can't get the new policy and now they're stuck. And now you have a mess on your hands. So, but even though almost every carrier on the planet has a replacement form in their application process, that replacement form, like 99.9% .9 of the time, does not actually cancel the existing coverage. So most insurance companies will acknowledge that they, that there is a replacement going on because they're going to get the form. The insurance carrier, either the new insurance carrier will send the replacement form to the old carrier. But most of the time that is not enough to initiate the stopping of a policy. So you've got to make sure that you tell your client, look, once you get your new policy in the mail or I deliver it, whatever the case may be, then cancel the old coverage. But they do need to make that call uh, or send a letter notifying the former insurance company that they want to cancel the coverage. Super, super, super important. Otherwise, uh, I learned this kind of the hard way. I thought that the replacement form back when I first started, I thought that the replacement form would take care of the cancellation. And then my client called me just spitting vinegar because they were getting billed in both places. So got to make sure that you have your client again, got to assume responsibility for that and tell your client, you got to make sure that you call and make that cancellation call so that you're not continually billed ongoing, but don't do it till you get that new policy in the mail. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is um, always remember that you have the fiduciary responsibility. Some people get caught up on this. The fiduciary responsibility, in my opinion, that you have when you are out seeing an insurance client is this. Do what is in the best interest of your client and you will be paid handsomely for it. Um, don't go in and try and show somebody where you can save them a nickel uh, or maybe put them into something that's not in their best interest just because you want to make a commission. Go find a client that you can help um, do that the right way with uh, as opposed to trying to shove a round peg in a square hole and replace things that don't have any business being replaced. Uh, replacement can be a tricky thing and you don't want to end yourself up in hot water with the carrier with multiple carriers, with your state insurance board, uh, or with your um, IMO if you are contracted through an IMO. So gotta be very careful. Replacement is not the kind of thing that you wanna mess around with. So make sure that you're always referring back to whoever your manager is for guidance on that. Um, and the carriers I've also found are very helpful. So I hope that this helps. I hope that this was just thrilling insurance talk, talking about replacements today. Um, but again, always remember that um, the best interest of you and your family is always the best interest of your clients. Take care, everybody. Don't forget, before you go, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to 
press on the bell so that you get notified of any time that we have new videos that go up. And we wish you all the best in the life insurance industry.